500 cooks distance. Uh, this this has been one of those videos, man. I tell you what, I, I'm I'm on two hours putting this video up, and every time I get started, I get um, uh, either I have technology issues, or I do do some some sort of bozo move, or I get interrupted by the uh, FedEx man, or the phone rings, or the phone rings, or the phone. <laughs> okay, sorry. All right, guys, let's try it again. Hopefully, this is the one that'll end up sticking. So uh, let's uh, let's 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 go for it. Um, what we did so far in uh, the previous video is we took a look at uh, what's called D fits, and uh, what this does uh, it uh, is a procedure that uh, we use uh, that addresses the uh, influence. of the ith case on the fitted value for that particular case. And uh, the simple or the uh, solution was pretty simple. Uh, you know at the uh, at the end of the day what we did here is we compared our predicted value uh, of uh, the, uh, the, 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 our model, uh, well, of our case, uh, uh, and then we compared it uh, to uh, the predicted model when uh, the, uh, the, the case was actually uh, deleted. So, uh, so I think uh, we would have that as uh, y sub, uh, uh, sub I, I guess is the way we'd say that. Uh, Guys, what we want to do now is we want to look at uh, Cook's distance. And I think it's uh, probably a more important uh, uh, influence measure than DF fits. Uh, DF fits is fine. It, you know, it, 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 it puts all the focus on uh, one case, which we'll do in all these situations, but it only puts uh, focus on one of the fitted values. Uh, Cook's distance uh, expand this a little a little bit, and I think it gives us uh, possibly a more important uh, influence measure. So, uh, what this does is it addresses uh, the influence of uh, case I on all n fitted values. And it looks to see how uh, the fitted values change for all of the cases compared to I being in the model and I being uh, out of the model. So the model created when I is in, uh, included and when uh, the model uh, that is in, uh, calculated when I uh, is out of the model. Now, as you might think, um, pretty... Uh, Easy to um, pretty easy to calculate, and the notation we'll use here is Cook's distance will be uh, will be d sub i, and it turns out that d sub i is uh, is pretty easy to calculate. Uh, although I'm actually going to show you an easier way to calculate. <clears throat> In that we sum up from i equal. Uh, well, actually, I tell you what, let's use this as j equal one to n. Because we, we, we've been using I as the case that's deleted, so uh, I want to leave room for that. So uh, we're going to look at the um, predicted value for case number one minus the predicted value for case number one when the I case is actually deleted. And unlike with the uh, uh, D fits, we actually square the numerator. Uh, the denominator actually turns out to uh, to look like uh, what we may expect it to from studying D fits. Uh, but guys, keep, uh, keep keep you know keep uh, the eye on the prize here. Uh, this is a sum, and it runs through all of the n cases, and it looks at the difference between these predicted values, not just for the case uh, you know, for the ith case, but for all n fitted values. So, um, you know, it's very similar to DF uh, fits, uh, especially in the numerator. Uh, uh, again, the obvious difference is uh, uh, it's fitted over the n cases instead of just, uh, just the ith case. 
and uh, the uh, uh, you know as I pointed out, uh, we uh, we square these differences, making the measurement uh, uh, without regard to the uh, sign of the effect. So guys, you can kind of think of the denominator serving as a uh, as a standardized uh, uh, a standardized measure. Now. You know, all this stuff is fine and dandy, but, uh, you know, what does it mean to have a uh, D sub I that's, uh, that's, that's extreme? So, um, first thing I want you to kind of think about is uh, these D sub I's can be modeled uh, according to the F distribution with degrees of freedom k plus 1, where k is the number of predictors, so k plus 1 is including our intercept. Uh, so uh, degrees of freedom, uh, k plus 1, and uh, n minus k minus 1. Now, guys, instead of the usual case, and what I mean by the usual case, if we're running an ANOVA, we may uh, typically want to look at uh, the F distribution and calculate a p-value. So I'm kind of calling this the usual case, uh, maybe appropriately, maybe not. But uh, guys, what we do in the F distribution when we're calculating uh, the p-value is we get our test statistic. And we're interested in the area to the right of the test statistic, which we call, I know we know that by now, called the p-value. Well, we're not interested that in that in this case. We're interested in the percent below uh, which is the percentile. So the percentile of the D sub I determines whether it's uh, uh, has uh, the case has uh, the I case has uh, you know you know a small influence, a moderate influence or uh, a large influence. So guys the threshold on these um, if our percentile uh, is less than the 20th, uh, I say that this is a small influence, no concern. If we're at the 20th percentile, um, up to the 50th, uh, I call that a moderate influence. And guys, if we get a percentile ranking uh, that's uh, greater than or equal to the 50th, uh, then, you know, I think that's a serious concern for the ith case. So you would want to take remedial measures here, and uh, you would want to uh, examine your uh, um, your model with and without uh, the i case. So guys, typically that's kind of the threshold there. If we get a percentile at the 50th percentile or higher, uh, then we, uh, we have room for possible uh, consideration. In fact, if I get a, a Cook's distance at the 50th percentile or higher, uh, it, it, to me it's a no-brainer. I'm going to... Uh, uh, run the model with and without the the ith case. Well, guys, just as uh, with DF fits, I mean, if you look back at the at the um, the, the, the the relationship for d sub i, uh, how we calculate d sub i uh, using uh, that formula, then we have to calculate the fitted value for each case, both with and without uh, the um, the ith case uh, included. So uh, there's an easier way. Uh, so uh, file this under how to calculate d sub i without fitting a new regression function. So we don't have to cre create uh, one with uh, the ith case and one without the ith case. And guys, it turns out this is uh, actually, I think, much simpler uh, than uh, 
It says written down, then I'll talk to you. I'm not going to talk to you until I get it written down. All right, uh, it's much simpler. The calculations are, uh, are much easier with uh, the, uh, uh, without you know, being forced to create uh, a new model uh, for the deletion of the ith case. All right, so, um, you know, guys, you can examine this if, uh, if you care to. Uh, I don't, uh, you know, yeah, I think it's probably worthwhile. Uh, you know, you can examine this term and this term because we're taking the product of essentially uh, two things. And the way we can make this one larger is uh, by la having a larger error. And the way that we can make this side larger is by having a larger diagonal element on our hat matrix. Now, if we have a larger error and kind of a moderate then our p-value probably um, p-value shoot our percentile is probably not going to be higher than a 50 so probably in this case uh, we're not going to have a concern if we have a moderate error and a larger diagonal element on the on the hat matrix that uh, also in terms of uh, fixed distance will probably give us no concern. Guys, where you run into uh, issues is where both of these are larger, and this is where our percentile ranking is typically above the, the 50th percentile. So that's the situation where we get into uh, uh, cases that uh, are concerning uh, to us. Now, I'm not going to do this. I hope you will. Uh, well, get centered here. Uh, I'm not going to make the calculation uh, uh, for this. Well, you know what? I'd actually kind of like to, um, just just for the sake of one thing. Uh, what I'd like to do is. Um, I'll tell you what, I want to bring up R. Um, yeah, I'm, I, I don't want to go through these calculations, but I do want to go through uh, uh, to show you the calculation of the uh, percentile. So, guys, I've already, um, already done some stuff here, and I encourage you to check me out. Uh, it turns out that the uh, error, uh, well... What I'd like to do here uh, is we've seen that when we fit uh, body fat uh, in terms of the triceps plus the thigh measure. So we have two predictors here. Uh, uh, we have seen, uh, you know, you know we've, seen, we've seen this done before in uh, the previous example, so uh, I, I'm not going not gonna to do that. Uh, but uh, if you were to do that, uh, the uh, and and let's let's just focus on the i equal three case because that third case it seems to be uh, the one that uh, was of most concern in terms of the x and y outliers and the df fit. So if we're going to do that, the first thing we would need is we would want the error for the third uh, case squared, and I've already done that, that turns out to be 10.087. Uh, P in this case, P, this should be K plus 1. So we have uh, two predictors plus 1, so uh, this value is equal to 3. Uh, the other thing we need is we need the mean square error of the full, or of the full model. And guys, when I ran that, I get 6.47. And uh, we need the diagonal, uh, the third diagonal element uh, in our hat matrix, and that turned out to be 0 0.3719. Uh, I encourage you to, uh, to check me on this, but uh, what I end up getting is I get the Cook's distance for the third case uh, when I multiply all of this out to be 0.4899, okay? Now, what I would want to do from this situation, uh, from, or from, from, from here, 
is I'd want to calculate the percentile ranking to see if it's anywhere near the 50th percentile to see if it's going to cause me any problems. So, uh, guys, what I would want to do there is, I'd, you know, jump into R. Uh, and uh, what I'd want to do is I'd want to do uh, PF. Uh, 0.4899. So this is going to allow me to look at the uh, the area below that value in the F distribution. Uh, so guys, remember, uh, first degree of freedom was K plus 1. And our second degree of freedom was our sample size. Minus K minus 1. So this would be uh, uh, K minus 3. Right? Yeah. So, guys, when I do that, uh, I get the 31st percentile. And, uh, you know, I'm writing this stuff down. That's the reason for the hesitation. And uh, I get the 31st percentile. So, uh, moving back up uh, to... Um, well, no, I didn't... Uh, I don't have it on this page. But uh, on a previous page... Uh, this is probably something that if I were publishing, uh, I would point it out. But I certainly don't think this uh, justifies uh, rerunning the model. So, guys, uh, I'm trying to I'm trying to cut to the chase here and get to the most important stuff. Uh, looks like we're probably going to have a couple more videos. This one's going to be a short one. So, uh, guys, that's uh, that's all I'm going to do here. Uh, that's really the expectations I want you to have, um, or uh, that my expectations of, of you for, uh, for quick distances.